So, for the purposes of the filming that we're having, um, obviously if this, we were teaching this for a, a, a real course, we'd all have to do it because it would be part of the part of the assessment to make sure we can do it. But if you, if we, if we, you know, if you'd rather not have a go in CPR for any reason, that's a, that's absolutely fine. So what we talked about, we're, we're glancing up there at the, um, at the screen there so that we can get an idea. So here I am, I'm coming across this casualty. There she is, she's not looking too good. Um, what's the first thing that I'm going to do? Check the danger. So I check the danger. So I'm checking the area to make sure that there isn't anything that might cause a danger to myself. And the second thing that I'm going to do? Check for response. Is check for response, okay? And this is where your AVCU comes in, okay? So we're looking for alert, we're looking for a response from her, and I'm going to use my voice to see whether or not there's any response to see whether, whether or not she's alert. The way that I do that is I make some noise either side of the head, and I use my voice as well to see if I can respond, can get a response. Hello, can you hear me? Open your eyes if you can hear me. Now, why might I clap both sides of her head? So deaf. Yeah, because somebody could possibly be deaf in one ear. So I make sure that I'm giving some um, command to both sides of the head to see whether or not there's a response, okay? The next one is pain, because sometimes at any level of consciousness, people can respond to a little bit of pain. Now, obviously, you can't be, um, you know, giving it pain to a high degree, but a pinch of the ear. And the other thing that you can do as well, just place your, your fingers just underneath the collarbone here, and as you're giving your, 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 your voice command, you can be pressing with your thumbs. Hello, can you open your eyes if you can hear me? Open your eyes if you can hear me. And I have an unresponsive casualty. Okay? So, what's my next priority? The airway. Okay? So, to check the airway, all I'm going to do is just place my hand on top of the casualty's head, on my thumb on the chin, and I'm going to open the mouth. Okay? And I'm going to have a little look inside the mouth to see if I can see anything in there that could be blocking their airway, okay? Now you have to be careful putting your hand in people's mouths, okay? But if you see anything in there and it's possible for you just to be able to hoik it out, the reason that might happen is sometimes if people choke, what happens is when the body gets starved of oxygen and they, and they go unconscious, all the muscles relax. So there is a possibility that you might see something, okay? And the next thing I'm gonna do is check for breathing. Now when I check for breathing, I'm just gonna tip that head back Okay, because what this does, it has an effect of opening the airway because of the muscular structure of the tongue. And then I'm going to put my ear and my cheek down towards the mouth and the nose. And the reason I put my cheek is because this is a sensitive part of my body. And as, it, as I, luck would have it, it's quite close to my ear. So I'll be able to listen and feel and see whether or not I can see with my eyes along the chest. I can see if the chest is rising and falling, and I can feel on my cheek, and I, or I could hear as to whether or not there is any breathing. Now, at this particular point, you have to do this for around about 10 seconds. Which, quite frankly, ladies and gentlemen, is the longest 10 seconds of your life. Because even in a very deep form of sleep, someone will breathe at least once every 10 seconds, okay? Now, if I get no breathing, the casualty is not breathing, what do you think would be the next? Yeah. The next thing I'm going to do is get help. Okay? Now, how might I get help? By going 911. Um, so I can call 911 or 999, and I can have my phone on speaker and place the phone next to me. Okay? And I can start that conversation. When you get through to control, they're going to ask you a number of questions, where you are, what's happened, and what might you say? When they say, what's happened, you're going to say, unconscious, unconscious. unconscious unresponsive female, yeah, and they don't appear to be breathing, yeah. Now the good news about modern technology is because your phone's on, they'll know exactly where you are, but you still need to be clear as to what, you're, what address you're at so that they can give every opportunity, which is very important, we're going to get to in a second that they can get to you as quickly as possible, okay? So I'm gonna get help, or I'm gonna call for help, or I'm gonna go and get help, okay? And then when I return, I'm gonna to need to then do what? CPR. I'm gonna to need to do CPR. Now it's perfectly okay if someone has 
their clothes on. But if you are in a situation where you're going to need to give somebody CPR, you're better off getting up, up close and personal, okay? So it can be done with, with clothes, but removing the clothes, either with a pair of uh, first aid jaw scissors, or if you can, if it's possible, don't start trying to pull people's t-shirts off over their head, because that's not going to work, okay? But if you do remove the clothes, you know, that, that can be better. I'm going to place the palm of my hand along the line where the base of the shoulder goes across the chest, just in between the nipples on the center of the chest, and I'm going to lace one hand on top of the other. Keep my arms nice and straight, and I'm going to do 30 three zero compressions. And we're going to get into the habit of counting them when we do them. And it looks like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Now it looks quite brutal, it has to drop the chest 5 to 6 centimetres and it has to be done at a rate of between 100 and 120 beats per minute, okay? 30 compressions. And then I'm going to give two breaths. Place my hand on the forehead, pinch the nose, tip the head back, open the mouth and I breathe. You don't have to breathe like blowing a balloon up. You just have to make a seal with your lips and breathe out with a gentle force. And as I do that, you'll see that the air will go into the canister. Now, in between breaths, you can see that I come away from the casualty and I watch because I want to see the rise and fall of the chest. And I give two breaths. Then I come back to CPR, hand goes into the middle, middle of the breastbone, link the fingers, the arms straighten, and I go back to my 30 compressions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. And then I go back to two breaths again. So when might I stop CPR? When the um if they start breathing. Yeah. One is if suddenly you get a response from the casualty, they pink up and they become conscious. Okay? That's one reason that you would stop. We never perform CPR on life conscious people, in okay? case it's not, not good for you, not good for your heart. What else might I stop? When the ambulance When the emergency services arrive, yeah. When emergency services arrive, they're more than likely, or they will, have an AED, which is a machine that gives a shock into the heart stops it. Now the only way that an AED works is if the heart is in one of two particular rhythms, VF or VT. If the, activity, the electrical activity of the heart is making the heart wobble or it's beating very, very quickly to a rate that it can't, can't sustain life. They shock the casualty, they switch the heart off momentarily and then if the heart is healthy enough and able to, it will then start to beat again normally, okay? The reason that you need to do this is because without you doing this, there's absolutely no opportunity of that ED working when they get to the casualty. For every minute that person is unconscious, their chance of life diminishes by 10%. So when you, when you hear that, kind of sounds like a light statistic, but if someone is in that condition for eight minutes, <coughs> you've only got a 20% chance of survival. So it's very important that you do something rather than, rather than nothing, okay? So I wonder, I'll talk you through it, if anyone's prepared to do their little primary survey here and try a little bit of CPR. Tom, you look like a winner of <laughs> Let's give it a go, Tom. Okay. So you can glance up there, Tom, because it will tell you what you need to do. So first thing you're going to do, you're going to approach your casualty, and you're going to have a little check around, see whether or not there's any danger. Good man. And then you look for that response. So voice. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Perfect. Can you open your eyes? Excellent. And then place your hands. That little press, and then reaffirm with your voice again. Hello, can you hear me? Perfect. Hello. 
No response. So we've got a bit of a problem, okay? So we're going to look for an airway, but we're just going to open at the chin there and just see whether or not you can see anything in there that might be blocking the airway, okay? Then we're going to look for breathing. So we're going to tip the head back slightly, lift the chin slightly, and we're going to put our ear and our cheek, perfect, down towards the mouth and the nose, looking along the line of the chest to see whether or not the chest rises and falls. And how long would we look for? 10 seconds. 10 seconds, because even in a deep sleep, casualty, people will breathe at least once within 10 seconds, okay? There's no sign that the casualty is breathing, okay? Your next step is to... Uh, CPR. Is to call for help. Call for help. Okay? So if they're not responsive, and they're definitely not breathing, the problem is, Tom, if you start CPR, you could be there for months. Okay, so you need, you need an AED, you need to get someone to call an ambulance, okay? Once that's done, we then need to commence CPR. So, where possible, you might expose the chest. You place one hand on top of the other, center of the chest, lace the fingers, keep the arms straight, and we look 30 compressions, five to six centimeters in depth, 100 to 120 beats per minute, and we count out loud when we do it. Go ahead. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Perfect. eight. What I need you to do, Tom, is go deeper. You're not going deep enough. That's it. Do you hear that click? Perfect. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Spot on. Then we need to give two breaths. So we're going to tip the head back. We're going to pinch the nose. Make a seal around the lips. Breathe in. Watch the rise and fall of the chest. And the second one, and then we're going to place our hands back onto the chest and 30 compressions. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Good man, two breaths. Tip your head back. Hold. Breathe in. And again, and we would go back to the chest compression. Tom, spot on, absolutely brilliant. Anyone else going to have a give it a go? Come on, Ben. Just a word about Annie. Annie is the most kissed face in history. <laughs> And Annie's cast was taken uh, from a young lady who was pulled drowned from the Seine in the 19th century. And nobody knew who she was. Um, and a local shopkeeper took a cast of her face and put it up in the shop to see whether or not they could identify her. No one ever identified her. Uh, and it was rumoured that the young lady had ended her life in the Seine uh, from a broken heart. So it's quite sweet that poor Annie's uh, face, that is her face, it's a model of her face, um, is now the most kissed face in history. So things didn't turn out too bad for her. Well, maybe they did. <laughs> so we're going to approach. I'm going to go over here, so put track where you need to be. So you're going to approach. The first thing that you're going to look for, Ben, is danger. Excellent. You're going to have a look around, make sure that you're it's safe before you start. After you assess the danger, you then assess the response. Can that's you hear me? That's the one. Can you hear me? Hello. Yeah. Okay. Open your eyes if you can hear me. We might use the little press of the thumb because pain sometimes can stimulate different areas. Very good. Next thing we know, we've had no response, so we need to check whether or not Breathing. there's anything in yeah, her yeah, airway. Yes. So before you pinch that, so right, just on the palm of the, the palm of the hand goes on the yeah. forehead, just open the mouth first. The reason being, if you tip her head back, if she's got something here and you tip her head back, it could drop into her airway. So you just open the chin and look at the have a look in, okay? That's good, very good. Can't see anything in there, so now you're going to check for breathing. Breathing. So we're going to tip the head back, that's it. And he's got ear, and cheek, line of the chest. How long? About 10 seconds. 10 seconds. 10 seconds, okay. And there's no sign of breathing, so what's your next move, Ben? Got an unresponsive female, and can you call for help, please? Excellent, yeah, because people only pop back to life when given CPR on Baywatch. Do you remember Baywatch? Why would people pop back to life given CPR on Baywatch though? Drownings, okay? 
There's a slight difference in your approach if somebody's drowning. We won't go into it, but you give rescue breaths first, okay? Uh, fire rescue, rescue breaths rather than chest compressions, and this, it, it, that's why sometimes with a drowning it can be slightly different. So you've made your call, you've got your phone onto the side, you're going to get up close and personal with Annie, why not? And we're going to lace the hands up, keep the arms straight. It's best to keep the arms straight because you want your body doing the work, because a couple of minutes of CPR you'll be absolutely exhausted. So rather than using your hands in this fashion, we're going to use the rock of the body. And it goes out loud. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, twenty. And then two rescue breaths. And what I need you to do is get me that, give me that click every time you press down, okay? That's it. And lungs, see how the lungs are inflating like that? You see that? And he's looking down the line of the body, seeing that, and then he goes into his second, two, three, four. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Ben. That's spot on. Right, any questions on that so far? Yes, and then you're saying if you're giving breath yeah. and the lungs are lungs, um, inflating. Yeah. Does that mean like something, something about um, a hundred lungs or something like that? Um, not necessarily. If you're giving breaths and you don't see there's resistance to your breath, that could be a blocked, um, that could be a blocked airway. If you see a rise and fall of the stomach, that can be that your breaths are actually going down into the stomach, which means you need to, meet, need to tip the head, head back to make sure you've got this, uh, an efficient uh, uh, airway. Um, the other thing that you need to bear in mind is it does need to be a tight, a tight seal. The process is slightly different with children, but sometimes if the face is much smaller, your mouth has to go over the mouth and nose, but that's a different, different, uh, different technique. Okay, so we come and take a seat then, that's brilliant. Thanks guys.